the soldiers being disposed three or five in a house, according to the number of the family they were to assassinate, had their orders given them secretly. They had been all received as friends by those poor people, who intending no evil themselves, little suspected that their guests were designed to be their murderers. At five o'clock in the morning, they began their bloody work, surprised and butchered 38 persons who had kindly received them under their roofs. McKeon himself was murdered and is much bemoaned. He was a stately, well-favoured man and of good courage and sense, as also the Lord Archintrickin, a gentleman of more than ordinary judgment and understanding, who had submitted to the government and had Colonel Hill's protection in his pocket, which he had got three months before. I cannot, without horror, represent how that a boy, about eight years of age, was murdered. He, seeing what was done to others in the house with him, in a terrible fright, run of the house, and espying Captain Campbell, grasped him around the legs, crying for mercy and offering to be his servant all his life. I am informed Captain Campbell inclined to spare him, but one Drummond, an officer, barbarously run his dagger through him, whereof he died immediately. The rehearsal of several particulars and circumstances of this tragical story makes it appear most doleful, as that Mackeon was killed as he was drawing on his breeches, standing before his bed and giving orders to his servants for the good entertainment of those who murdered him. While he was speaking the words, he was shot through the head and fell dead in his lady's arms, who through the grief of this and other bad usages she met with, died the next day. It is not to be omitted that most of those poor people were killed when they were asleep, and none was allowed to pray to God for mercy. Providence ordered it so, that the night was most boisterous, so as a party of four hundred men, who should have come to the other end of the glen, and begun the lie-work there at the same hour, intending that the poor inhabitants should be enclosed and none of them escape, could not march that length, until it was nine o'clock, and this afforded to many any opportunity of escaping, and none were killed but those in whose houses Campbell of Glen Lyon's men were quartered, otherwise all the male under seventy years of age, to the number of two hundred, had been cut off. For that was the order, and it might have easily been executed, especially considering that the inhabitants had no arms at that time, for upon the first hearing that the soldiers were coming to the glen, they had conveyed them all out of the way, for though they relied on the promises which were made them for their safety, yet they thought it not improbable that they might be disarmed. I know not whether to impute it to the difficulty of distinguishing the difference of a few years, or to the fury of the soldiers, who being once glutted with blood, stand at nothing, that even from above seventy years of age were destroyed. They set all the houses on fire, drove off all the cattle to the garrison of Inveloki, nine hundred cows, two hundred horses, and a great many sheep and goats, and there they were divided among the officers. And how dismal may you imagine the case of the poor women and children was then! It was lamentable, past expression their husbands and fathers and nearest relations were forced to flee for their lives, they themselves almost stripped and nothing left them, and their houses being burned, and not one house nearer than six miles. And to get thither, they were to pass over mountains, and wreaths of snow in a vehement storm, wherein the greatest parts of them perished through hunger and cold. It fills me with horror to think of poor, stripped children and women, some with child and some giving suck, wrestling against a storm in mountains, and heaps of snow, and at length to be overcome, and give over, and fall down, and die miserably. <laughs>